we've created um, uh, the Defence Artificial Intelligence Centre. Um, of course, that's not the only place in defence where artificial intelligence is being um, either examined or indeed um, employed. Um, but we wanted to create a, a, a focus to make sure that we're able to to leverage artificial intelligence in the in the in the early um, work of this. And and I saw this in my previous role as the chief of defence intelligence. And um, we've used artificial intelligence quite a lot in terms of how we deal with data in our surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities. We gather enormous volumes of data, which is far too great for human beings to be able to process on their own. And quite a lot of that, the value of that information was, I suppose people would say, was kind of lost on the cutting room floor. You use that information for your particular purpose, and then you kind of dis, you disregarded it, when in fact, there's still value that could come from that information. And we're, we've been using artificial intelligence to help that sort of discrimination. So I'll perhaps try and bring that to life by an example. Photographic interpreters in kind of old language or imagery analysts, people that are looking at satellite imagery. Um, in the past, uh, an individual would start a shift and they'd have a stack of images. Um, in the old days, it would be a, lip, a, a physical stack of images, now a set of images on a screen. And they would have to look through all of those images in order to determine what had changed. Well, the application of advanced technology, including artificial intelligence, and in this case, probably more machine learning. But what we're able to do is to make sure that the image which showed the change was immediately served um, to the analyst rather than having to go through and do the act of discrimination. So what that's doing is it's helping us in terms of pace. It's helping us in terms of accuracy. Um, it's also helping us in terms of, um, of getting kind of moving our analytical capability sort of up the value chain. It also means that our analysts, I think, are able to get um, a great deal more satisfaction from what they do. Do you feel then that there are more advantages as opposed to disadvantages in terms of the use of AI? Defence is an organisation which is you know, always got the potential we could be in conflict with others. Um, others will undoubtedly be seeking to use artificial intelligence in ways, um, in, in ways to affect um, our capabilities. I think for us, we, we, we need to both be able to be willing to exploit opportunities and advantages which come um, through artificial intelligence. We're going to see this, you know, this isn't limited to the military um, sphere. We're going to see this in every element of our lives. So we'll see artificial intelligence um, playing a role. There are lots of areas, I think, at the moment where people perhaps don't realize that artificial intelligence is playing such a fundamental part in their lives. Now, we need to guard against the risks. Those risks are both the risks which are posed by adversaries using um, capabilities enhanced by artificial intelligence um, or other advanced technologies. That's, a, that's a, a common theme. We'll have done that for forever as new technology arrives. Um, I think we also need to make sure that uh, we understand the crucially how, the, how artificial intelligence is working. Um, so uh, we, make, we make decisions um, which could involve uh, people being killed. And, and if you're making those decisions, you need surety um, that you're making those decisions accurately and properly. And therefore, it's important when we bring artificial intelligence into those, those decision-making chains that we understand how the artificial intelligence is working and what the artificial intelligence is doing in that sense. And so for us, there's an important element of the sort of the moral and ethical use of artificial intelligence is, is fundamentally important to how we do this. We are... We're a, we're a moral organization. Um, you know, we talk about defense power. Um, we talk about um, our conceptual component, the physical component, and a moral component. Part of that is about our people, but part of that is also about the fact that we operate in a, in a moral and ethical way. Uh, and so we need to make sure as we bring these new technologies into, um, into our work, particularly when it's affecting our decision-making process, that we have got surety over what the technology is doing and how it's influencing those decisions, because we want to make sure that we're acting in the in in a you know an appropriate um, uh, uh, and proportionate manner. Thanks for watching. For more from Forces News, like and subscribe to our channel.